Welcome back. So, the Premier League season has obviously ended and that is all of the domestic competitions done for us. It is only the Champions League final left for us. Only the Champions League final, he says. Well, it's quite something for us to actually, you know, get to. And a very good achievement for us to get there anyway. But compounded even better by the fact that we did manage on the final day of the season get the top four as well. Now, obviously, looking at Liverpool's season overall, could we have done better? Is there anything that Liverpool could have done better this season? And we're going to answer all of those sorts of things, you know, over the course of this video as well. But I want to start with how happy I am with Liverpool. Because there were times, and I remember saying stuff like this in my reaction videos to games earlier in the season, especially the Champions League ones where... You know, we, we were drawing with teams that we felt we shouldn't be drawing with, like Spartak Moscow, where we drew 1-1 and such like that. You know, we weren't performing very well. We weren't performing very well in the league. There was, you know, ups and downs all over the place. Biggest ups and downs in the Premier League, for sure. Being absolutely hammered 5-0 by Man City. That was unbelievable and couldn't see it coming. We just had an international break, I believe. Before that, we'd just hammered Arsenal 4-0. Then we go and get demolished by Man City, 5-0. And obviously you see where City are. I mean, they finished the season with 100 points. They've broken all kinds of records this season. I think they got 32 wins out of 38 in the Premier League. Unbelievable stuff. You can't even compare to what City have done. Then, obviously, we had the Tottenham game where we lost 4-1. Dejan Lovren looked like an absolute headless chicken in that game. It was ridiculous and... While I smile about it now, it's because I kind of can. You know, we secured ourselves into the Champions League group stages next year. That's fantastic. But at the time, it just looked like all the wheels were going to come off. We weren't performing very well at all. There were worrying, worrying times. Maybe even other times as well, where uh, I think we'd beaten, we'd beaten Swansea pretty handily or something like that before Christmas. And then after Christmas, we got beat by them 1-0. And that was, you know, we hadn't been beaten in a while up until that point after the Tottenham game and stuff like that. And Swansea, you know, they got a one nil against us and we couldn't do anything. You know, other downs, I would say, depends how you look at it. I'll obviously come to the big one in a, in a, in a second. But Emre Chan, no one seems to know what's going on with the dude. People keep saying that he's injured. There's fresh rumours today that he has got contact with Juventus. Um, from I think goal.com or something it, again it always depends on how reliable these sources are and I will obviously do transfer videos as we are now coming up well the transfer window opens tomorrow which that weirded me out but obviously it closes at the very before the start of the season which I am a fan of by the way but anyway regardless of that Emre Chan. I mean he's been battling fitness and stuff like that apparently for the last couple of months and it just He's not going to, in my opinion, he's not going to be fit for the Champions League final. And even if he is, should he go straight into the team? In my opinion, no, because he's not going to be up to speed. Even, you know, making a bench appearance? No, not in my opinion. I think there's other people in that team that have got us on this Champions League run through the Premier League and stuff like that as well, that they would actually be my preference over Emre Chan. Maybe Emre Chan has played his last game as a Liverpool player, and I appreciate everything that he's done. But I just wish that he'd maybe come out and clarify some things just to settle the fans a little bit. I know there's people that say that Emre Chan, he signed a contract, he's fulfilling that contract, and he's fulfilled that contract. We shouldn't really expect any more of him. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But as fans, I think not necessarily that we deserve to know, but it would be nice to know if a player is just going to go, look, hands up, I'm going to go and move on somewhere else. I'm going to go to Juventus or wherever. Um, I'm going to do my best for the team or if he's genuinely injured because obviously there's obviously rumours that he's not injured he's maybe doing a Phil Coutinho and he's got this injury that's a mystery injury he's not been announced for the World Cup squad for Germany though and that's quite big because he's normally involved so yeah, he probably is injured it'd just be nice sometimes for a player to come out and actually just confirm something or, or just squash a rumour or, or confirm that rumour and say yes, I am going to be going here or there like I think Fred came out and squashed some rumours about Manchester United the other day, saying that, look, I'm not going to be talking about my future until after the World Cup. We will sort things out then. Bang! That settles your mind as a fan, and you can settle yourself as a club as well. So that's quite a down thing there as well. Obviously, it looked like a downer at the time for a few people, 
I was quite optimistic that we would be able to get through the Coutinho sale. Obviously, we sold Coutinho for, I think, it was either 142 or 145 million to Barcelona in January. And obviously, a lot of pundits, the media and such like that, were on us as if, like, you know, we were going to struggle, we wouldn't get top four. I think it was actually Jamie Redknapp said this could actually be the deciding factor of whether Liverpool get top four or not. And in my opinion, no, it wasn't. For a long time after Coutinho's sale, and once we got through a little bit of a sticky patch after we got beat by Swansea, and obviously once we got beat by Swansea 1-0, people were saying, oh, well, Phil Coutinho could have done something for you there. That's always going to happen if you sell a player like that in January. And don't get me wrong, I loved Coutinho. I thought he was a brilliant player for us, and we did well with him. We developed him very, very well. And you know what? He'll go and do well at Barcelona. How well? No one knows. But he will do well. He's got quality players around him. He, and he will have helped them win the league this year as well. They couldn't go unbeaten, but he'll help, he's helped them win the league. Look, I'm not going to say any ill will towards Coutinho, but what I will say is I think we have proved a lot of the media wrong because a lot of people, especially you know TV pundits and journalists and such like that as well, Immediately thought that the wheels were going to come off for Liverpool, that we were, you know, we were going to go out of the Champions League and everything like that. We weren't going to go on this big run that we have managed to do. And don't get me wrong, nobody, nobody, unless someone took a punt on a bet, nobody can say that we were going to make the Champions League final this season. No way. I would have. I said at the start of the season, I would have been happy if we just got out the groups and made it into the knockout rounds. That's. I was happy with that. I thought, all right, that's progression because last time we were in the Champions League before this, we sucked. And we sucked bad. We really did. If you remember it, you remember. And you wish you didn't. <laughs> okay? That's how bad it was. So, we've gone on this incredible run in the Champions League. We come up against, we're going to come up against you know, the definite kings of Europe right now. But what you saw, in my opinion, was our attack get a bit more fluid. You see the likes of you know, Mane, Firmino, Salah. People are like, oh, the Fab Four's gone. We've still got these three fantastic players. You've seen the season that Mohamed Salah's had. Everybody's seen it. Every team has seen it. And everybody's team probably wanted it as well. What a season that man has had. Broke the Premier League record for goals in a single 38-game season. He has gone literally one goal above, but it's massive. It's massive to say that Alan Shearer set it, Cristiano Ronaldo matched it, and Suarez matched it at 31 goals. Mohamed Salah took it to 32. And we've got fantastic strikers, fantastic attackers in this league. Sergio Aguero and Harry Kane to name two. But Mohamed Salah comes to Liverpool in his very first season, breaks a record like that, scoring goals for fun. And he only got one hat-trick in that period. Unbelievable stuff. And I think, who was it? I think was it against Watford? Brilliant stuff anyway. He was fantastic. People were a little bit on Sadio Mane this season, but his stats and his performances have actually been very, very good. In fact, if not better than last year, he's been much more effective. I know he misses a lot of chances, and people say, oh, people say he's world-class. He's like, look, he may not be world-class, but he's brilliant for us, and he's brilliant as part of that attacking three. And Bobby Firmino, what can you say about the man that hasn't already been said? He is the, I've said it a lot at times, he is the linchpin between our midfield and our two other attackers in Mane and Salah. Here's the linchpin. He makes everything click. He makes it work. And he's fantastic. Because of those, no one has been turning around saying, aren't you missing Phil Coutinho now? People forgot. Honestly, people forgot. I forgot. There's plenty of times when I'm just like, oh, I'll watch like um, Liga Revista or whatever, Revista La Liga, something like that, or maybe catch a La Liga game and I'm like, oh, oh, Coutinho, wow, man, I forgot about that guy. And not like, oh, I forgot about him, what a dick. Like, literally, genuinely forgot about him. Kind of like I forgot about Daniel Sturridge as well. That's another, that's another thing for maybe another day. Maybe not even a day, because I think Sturridge is definitely done as a Liverpool player, in my opinion. But these were two players in Sturridge and Coutinho that we used to really rely on, and maybe they didn't deliver all the time. Now we, we've got a massive progressive team that are working together. You've got people that are coming in. Obviously, Salah was a massive talent and he had the potential to do well. Mane, again, massive talent, potential to do well. Firmino, massive talent, potential to do well. You knew what you were going to get from our midfield. You're going to get hard work and some creativity. Now, 
Oxlade Chamberlain is another person that proved me wrong this season. I didn't think he was going to be a good signing for us. Turned out to be a brilliant signing for us. And I am happy to eat my words on that one, I'm telling you now. I am happy to be wrong about that. That's fine. I don't mind being wrong. I don't mind admitting that I'm wrong as well. And he proved me wrong. And another guy that proved me wrong was Andrew Robertson. And he proved us, maybe quite a lot of us wrong, in a huge way. We have been crying out for a left back for a long, long time time and then we go and sign someone from Hull who'd been relegated for 8 million and we were like a few of us were a bit like what is going on here the signing of Oxlade Chamberlain the signing of Andrew Robertson Mohamed Salah as well because no one knew how good he was going to be you just knew that he was good and he had good potential but those three right there how they've contributed to this season and I am so gutted that Oxlade Chamberlain is out for as long as he is, could be back in November at the earliest. And that is gutting, but he was brilliant for us, excellent for us. Never going to forget his, his goals he got against Man City in the Premier League and the one that he got in the Champions League. What a screamer, what a goal. Never going to forget that one. Robertson transformed our left side, he did. He transformed our left back area. Moreno had done well, he had done well. And I'm going to give him credit for that. He had done well earlier in the season. But then he got injured, Andrew Robertson steps forward, and the man is just ridiculous. He doesn't have the pace of Moreno, but he has everything else in abundance. Passing, absolutely brilliant passing, crossing. He can shoot, but doesn't he chooses to pass a lot more than he than he can than he does choose to shoot. He is working so hard, his work rate is excellent. Up and down the pitch, his defensive work rate is brilliant for us. It's been one of he is one of the best left backs, if not I can't really say the best left back, but he might be one of the best left backs I've seen at Liverpool ever. Like in my lifetime that I remember. That he is excellent and he could definitely be one of the best that we've ever had. He really, really could be. He's twenty four years old, he's got so much time. So much time. Oxley Chamberlain, so much time. We've got quite a young squad overall. We have. And no one epitomises that. Two people, but obviously one more than the other. Joe Gomez was really good this season. When he came back from injury, he wasn't he was not back from injury. He was still injured and he was trying to help a depleted squad out. And that man was excellent in doing that. He showed great character. He was excellent when he was played in the team, when he was playing at right back, sometimes a centre back as well. And for him to be injured is gutting as well. But Trent Alexander-Arnold, massive. I mean, the guy has... The guy has... What, he's 18, 19? And he has got, he's got balls the size of, you know, watermelons. He has just come into this team. When we looked like what was going on with Nathaniel Klein, and we didn't sign a right back, we were really putting all of our eggs in like two baskets with Gomez and Trent Alexander-Arnold and like, is this going to work? Is this really going to work? You've got two guys that are like 18 and 19, however old either of them are respectively, but they're definitely not even 20 yet. I'm pretty sure of that. We're going to put all of our eggs in these two baskets? Man, man, we, we could have missed a trick here signing a right back. Didn't need to. Did not need to. It's an important... The wing-back or left-back, right-back positions are so important in football these days, both in terms of defence and also in starting and contributing to attacks. These two people, Andrew Robertson, Moreno earlier in the season, Gomez, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Klein when he did manage to come back near the end of the season as well, but Trent Alexander-Arnold has owned that position and he's made that his position. And I think I said some part way through the season when Alexander-Arnold was doing really well that when Klein comes back, he's probably going to have to fight Alexander-Arnold for his place back, not just get his place back. And I do genuinely believe that that is the case. Nathaniel Klein comes back fit and firing, that'll be excellent next season. If he comes back and he's fit, he's absolutely on fire, great stuff. But he's going to have massive competition from Alexander-Arnold. And I do think that Alexander-Arnold right now is our first choice right back. The faith that was shown in Carrius as well to finally step away from Mignolet and I'm really trying not to disrespect Mignolet but he's just not good enough as a goalkeeper anymore and I'm not entirely sure whether he ever was let's be honest so I'm just putting that out there I don't know if he was ever really good enough for Liverpool great shot stopper at times and he can save a penalty but it's not enough in my opinion 
Karius has got room to grow. He's got many, many years ahead of him and he's only gone on from strength to strength this season for Liverpool and he's been excellent. He has been brilliant. No one can deny him that. And I do believe that he has the most clean sheets in the Champions League this season. And I might be wrong on that one, but I do believe he could be up for the Golden Glove in the Champions League. I might be wrong, but I think that is correct. He's been excellent. He proved me wrong again. I don't mind being proved wrong, but he's been awesome. And why am I going on about all these things that are really good? There's a lot of different, you know, the media have actually been quite okay with Liverpool, you know, only hitting top four and hitting fourth place because there were opportunities throughout this season where we could have finished higher. No one was catching Man City after about November, December. Man City were doing, they, you knew that they were on a crusade that was nigh on impossible for anyone to knock them off. You know, we may have made them falter a little bit when we beat them 4-3 in the league and then obviously we beat them, you know, back to back in the Champions League as well. But they were on a crusade and they did, they, they've done things in the Premier League we've never seen. You know, they ground out results, they absolutely obliterated teams, my team included. They, they did, they just absolutely obliterated some teams. They struggled against some others. They struggled in some of the other, you know, domestic cups. But they've gone on, they've broke records, they've broke almost record after record after record. You've got to give it to City. No one was catching them as soon as the year turned to 2018. It was almost impossible. Where I'm looking at Liverpool, where we could have improved, okay, and I'm just going to look at the Premier League table, how it finished here. When you look at the, the wins, losses and draws, okay, when you had like, obviously, you know, Man City lost two, they drew four and won 32. Unbelievable stats, unbelievable. You had Man United in second, they won 25, drew six, lost seven. Then you had Tottenham, they won 23, uh, they drew eight and they lost seven. Liverpool lost five, okay, so we lost two less than Man City and Tot uh, Man United and Tottenham. We drew 12 and won 21. And I'm looking at that thinking, you turn those draws into wins, then that would have been, if you turn those, say if you were to turn those draws into wins, so you'd put, we drew 12, we won 21. So we would have been able to win 33. <laughs> and that would never happen. I'm not saying that would ever happen. Don't get me, don't get it wrong. I'm not saying that would ever happen where we take every draw and win them. But I'm looking at some of the draws that we had. I'm just going to set my iPad down here. I look at some of the draws that we had. West Brom at home and we were 2-0 up. And then it gets to the 70th minute and for some reason we decide to go, go on. And it's 2-2. Things like that. Draws like that were ridiculous. Other draws, like the one we had against Man United at Anfield near, uh, uh, near the start of the season or near the first half of the season anyway, stuff like that, you can overturn that and it could have been more points, more points and more points. And this is something that's indicative of Liverpool overall, is that that is the massive improvement feature that you'd have to look at for Liverpool. And how they do it, it's got to, you've got to be looking at things like your defensive work rate, your defensive working together. And this all also could come round to the fact of we improved defensively once we brought in Van Dijk, made sure that Karius was number one, had Robertson on the left-hand side as well. And Van Dijk has been an absolutely massive improvement. Has he been a £75 million sign-in? I'm not entirely sure anyone is worth the amount of money that you ever pay for them because I think that money in football is ridiculous. I think he's been very, very worth his value and I think he'll only get better and better. He came to us not exactly fit. He hadn't been playing for Southampton. He'd been off an injury as well. And he is doing very well for Liverpool. He's had some hairy moments, obviously, when uh, I think he got shrugged off the ball by Sterling in the, man in the uh, Champions League's quarterfinals. Um, and he got shrugged off the ball and it, they'd scored within like a minute or two, something like that. that was, he's had hairy moments. He has had hairy moments, but I've never looked at a centre-back with more confidence in a long, long time since Van Dijk. I've never looked at someone who looks just so cool, calm and collected. And that transforms through the, through the rest of the back line and the goalkeeper. They look confident with him there. And that is a massive difference for Liverpool. That is where he makes a difference. That composure. You, you can almost... Not everybody has that composure, especially in a defence. And that is where we need to improve next year. Maybe 
you know, without defensive collapses like we had against Man City, where we we'd lost five 0 we lost against Spurs four one. Little ridiculous draws here. Opening day of the season, three three against Watford. Unbelievable stuff. And I think the day before that, Arsenal had gone and won four three against Leicester. It's one of those, isn't it? We have to improve defensively, and maybe we can start getting those numbers even closer to like Tottenham and then closer to United as well, where they only drew like seven or six. We've drawn 12 this season, 121. And I think that's definitely, if we can improve on those, as the old saying goes, you turn losses into draws, draws into wins. If you turn some of those draws into wins, seeing as we only lost five this season, maybe, maybe something could happen in future in the Premier League for us. But overall, I'm so happy. I know this, this for me, right now, looking at this video, it doesn't feel like I've, I've had much of a structure to what I've been saying. But I really want to reiterate how happy I am with us in the Premier League, that we've got Champions League for next season as well, which was huge for us. Because it's vital for us to get the Champions League qualification already for next year. We're in the group stages. Get in. Now we can focus on the final, because it would have been gutting for us to have to go to the final and potentially have to, have to have to put that pressure on us winning it against Real Madrid to get in the Champions League next year or it was Europa League all the way. I'm so glad that we can now look forward to the fact that we've got Champions League next year, we've got a final to look forward to and get up for and I believe that we can win it but more on that another time. And, uh, and then it's going to be transfers and I think that this is key. You get the Champions League qualification, you know that everybody around the world knows that you are in Europe, you're in the big competition next year, maybe, maybe it just makes getting your transfer targets that little bit easier because they're going to want, they're looking at you thinking you're in, you don't have to do a qualifying process anymore, you're in it, let's talk and that is going to be the end of this video, I am going to talk about transfer news and I'm going to talk about the Champions League build up as well, but for now, if you've liked this video, please do like it, get your thoughts on Liverpool this season in the comments box below, I've missed making regular videos for you guys and I do miss talking to all of you guys but I'd love to get you back in the comments and let's have a discussion let's talk about stuff get your thoughts in there I'd really appreciate it thank you so much for watching as always if you do like it do like the video and subscribe if you're new around here and I will catch you later